dance videos, lip syncing, and throw in a few viral trends, and you have TikTok. A few key events had to happen in the correct order for this little known platform to rise into popularity, so much so that the established tech giants had to restructure their own platform just to remain relevant. But behind the scenes, young users find themselves in a dark place. Brain fog, anxiety, Tourette syndrome, borderline personality disorder, multiple personality disorder. In this video, we will explore what happens to the human brain on social media. The rise of TikTok was engineered from a perfect storm. The pandemic-induced fears and the increased isolation led to the instant hope of eliminating quarantine boredom. After all, why not have a dance and have a laugh while the world comes to an end? Full disclaimer, I'm not on TikTok and I refuse the scrolling behavior regardless of the platform. I do have a post short form content to prevent my own online extinction. I will address this apparent contradiction in the redemption arc of this video. Let's start with the most enticing opportunity. We're being told that people's attention spans are getting shorter. Short form content allows us to quickly capture people's attention give them high value information or entertainment and do this in a manner that is more efficient and more engaging. Short form content also solves for what was previously the tedious task of going viral. And we can do all of this while discovering more content in a short period of time. There is however a cost to all of this convenience. The TikTok algorithm plays on Theodore Sturgeon's law that 90% of everything that you watch is crap. You keep scrolling until you find that one content that gives you an emotional hit and then you immediately fall back on that 90% of the content craving for your next emotional hit. This idea of discovering something new is more specifically an addiction that is running on the same algorithm as a gambling machine. The rapid switching of context is not something that the human brain is designed for. It is the equivalent of having a conversation but abruptly switching the context of that conversation mid-sentence every three to eight seconds. The hook required to reset the brain's attention also begins to numb the brain and there's only so much spectacle that the brain can handle before reality itself is diluted and we start to struggle to exist in the mundane. We are being told that the attention span is getting shorter so short form content is where it's at. This however is a huge mistake. We must address why the attention span is getting shorter rather than enabling it yet this is so glaringly obvious that no one wants to look at the elephant in the room. Short form content has fractured people's ability to hold information in their working memory, which is the amount of information that they can hold live in their own mind in real time. Attention not only targets what we focus on externally, but is the ability to observe information that we hold live in our own working memory and buffer this content so that we are able to articulate thought and it is an essential part of being able to think critically. The lack thereof results in brain fog and the lapse of attention altogether where people momentarily blank out and stare aimlessly for no reason. This is far from the extraordinary abilities that the human brain is capable of. Before the influence, uh, great inventors and entrepreneurs of the past often worked for decades without recognition or reward. And uh, this often meant that they were self-taught, self-made, and faced ongoing objections that they're up to no good, let alone contemplate something that has never been done before. And it is true that we spend our 20s trying to figure things out, our 30s doing what we've figured out, and our 40s benefiting from what we have figured out. But it does not always work out like this. It often follows extreme highs and lows and this becomes defining moments in a person's life. Now however, the decades of dedication that requires an overwhelming will and strength of character has been replaced by spontaneous success. 
the TikTok algorithm solves for a fabricated desire, which is to go viral. And this is a false solution to loneliness and the elusive sense of belonging. What a free will when an algorithm decides what means something to you. It is hard to be professional, give people what they want and be yourself. This is something that I can't simply overlook. It takes time for me to consolidate an idea, find how it aligns with my own values and then share something meaningful. It is much easier to report what other people think if you don't have ideas and values of your own. The avalanche of information also makes it difficult to filter what is real and what is not. The identity that we formulate in our formative ears is often what becomes what we stand for later in life. And this is often based on the virtues and preferences of the time. Today, however, short form content doesn't provide nearly as much information to role model from. And so what we see is underdeveloped personalities from the lack of formative information. Unlike the playground, which provides a sandbox environment for us to test our sense of self, we've created an online culture that glorifies the self-diagnosed and cancels anyone who refutes their dysfunction. To be clear, psychiatry itself fabricates disorders, and more on this in the video linked in the description, let alone fictitious disorders that are made up for attention. For example, when we look at multiple personality disorders, the acting in these disorders is so convincing that the actors themselves believe it to be real. So it has become futile to appear reputable when it is self-evident that psychology has become an instrument to facilitate this political agenda. Yet it is undeniable that the prevalence of developmental conditions such as Tourette syndrome is spontaneously spreading psychogenically and has accumulated over 6 billion views on TikTok. And the mass adoption of a rare genetic neurodevelopmental disease that is the result of uh, cortical thinning in the somatosensory and parietal cortices is particularly concerning. Not because there is some new brain disease that we have to be concerned about, but because it lacks any neuroanatomical parallels that is found in actual Tourette syndrome. Fictitious disorders have been trivialized for the sake of popularity, fitting in and finding a sense of belonging. Actual Tourette syndrome is typically found in boys between the ages of five and six, while the tics found on TikTok are psychogenic rather than neurodevelopmental in nature and is majority female with a mean age of 18.8. And many of these girls admit that they abruptly develop these tics while watching another creator. And on top of this, many of them sell merchandise and have paid appearances, despite the fact that 65% of their own audience believe their tics to be fake. In our own lifetime, we've seen the transition from television to computer screens to mobile devices. And kids of the 80s and 90s are the last of their kind to predate the internet. Although we too went through our fair share of transformations, and I'm guilty, for example, of being the rebellious 90s emo teenager and transitioning to the health-conscious hipster in my 20s. There is no reversing the era of time, and we have come a long way from the Stone Age. However, people are becoming wiser with how they choose to spend their time on social media. And I personally grew up on a tropical island before the age of the internet. And this allowed me to foster genuine relationships with family members, community, and nature. And this connection is forged from a handful of people that you can count on. And the reliability and trust is created from healthy, strong bonds between people. And this goes beyond the fleeting gratification that we get from followers that come and go. I keep my own social media presence deliberate, investing more time creating content rather than consuming it. In fact, in the latest insights from Adobe Future of Creativity study, 
it shows that content creators benefit from the pleasure of sharing their work and improve mental health from the creative act of producing content. And this could in fact be the redemption arc that closes the content loop. In reality, there are no easy and comfortable choices. I honestly do not have a clear answer to neatly navigate this volatile and sometimes morally questionable reality. There are, however, steps that I take to ensure the lasting well-being and longevity of our brain and body. And I share these long-form neuroscientific secrets in my Build Your Brain playlist, which is linked here.